<sighs> hey guys, this is Josh Bills, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a super cheap touchscreen computer. Now for this project, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi, which is basically going to act as the computer part, and we're going to put in an SD card, which is going to be loaded with the operating system. We're also going to need a screen. For this, I use this touchscreen, but if you want to cut back on cost, you can also use a screen without the touchscreen component. And I'll add the links to all these parts in the description below. To transfer the video from the Raspberry Pi to the screen, we're going to need an HDMI cable. I used an HDMI ribbon because it's a little smaller and more attractive, and you can just plug it into the HDMI port on each. After that, we're going to need something to power the screen and relay the touchscreen info. So for that, I'm just going to use a USB to micro SD cable. And I want to shorten it because it's really long and bulky. So I'm going to remove all the insulation from this cable so that we can expose the wires. And then all we have to do is go ahead and solder it. Now for soldering, the soldering iron is very hot. So be careful that you don't touch it and uh, keep your hands safe. Now all we have to do is plug this in to the USB port on the Raspberry Pi and that will relay the display and touchscreen information. To test this out, all we have to do is plug in some power through the micro SD port on the Raspberry Pi and we can see it boot right up. You can go ahead and test out the touchscreen and as you can see mine works pretty well. Now we're going to need to build an enclosure for all of this. For this I'm just going to use all cardboard basically and I'm going to trace out the screen. Now as you can tell, I really like using the Raspberry Pi. In the past, I've used it to make a laptop, I've used it to make a touchscreen tablet, and I've even used it to make a Game Boy emulator. I find it's a really useful mini computer and it's one of the smallest, cheapest, and most well-supported ones on the market. If any of you are into programming or engineering, this is really useful for your projects because unlike a normal computer, the Raspberry Pi has a bunch of input and output pins. So you can connect it to motors or LEDs and even have it interface with sensors. And you can program this all using Python and other softwares built in on the Raspberry Pi. Recently in one of my university courses that we even used this for a project, we had to build some glasses for blind people to basically detect objects and we basically built all of this off the Raspberry Pi and interfaced it with all the sensors and motors and everything we needed. So I definitely recommend getting one and becoming familiar with it if you're into doing these sorts of projects. For building the case, one cool trick I learned if you want to use curved pieces is to cut slits into cardboard and make sure you don't go all the way through the cardboard. That allows you to bend the cardboard and make really nice round shapes without creasing the cardboard at all. Now as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you're going to need to load an operating system onto your micro SD card to make the computer work. Some SD cards also come with the operating system preloaded, so that's an option as well, but it's not too difficult and there's lots of content out there on how to do it, so I'll make sure to leave a link in the description of the video. Once we're done with the enclosure, now we want to add sound to the computer. For this, I'm going to use a speaker. Now, I recommend you guys use a dollar store speaker because they're very, very simple. For this, I use the only speaker I had laying around, which was a Bluetooth speaker. What you're going to want to do is if your speaker has a battery, detach the battery first and then detach the wires that connect to the speaker part of the speaker. Now, what we're left with here is the amplifying unit. We're going to connect the amplifying unit to either the speakers that came with the speaker or speakers of your choice, which I used two small little speakers. And then we're going to solder those speakers to the amplifying unit. Now, once we mount all this, all that's left is to connect the power of the speakers to the, power, to the USB port of the Raspberry Pi and connect an auxiliary cable of the speakers to the auxiliary port of the Raspberry Pi. Now, I forgot to show this, but for my speaker, it's all in one. So the one plug that goes into the amplifying part of the, the speaker can just plug into the power and the auxiliary port of the Raspberry Pi. To power our computer, all you need is a micro SD cable plugged into a wall outlet or phone charger. Now we can go ahead and boot it up and we can test the touchscreen. And as you can see, it works really well. With our computer, we can also browse the internet and go to our favorite websites like joshbuild.com. This is my website and this is where I try to post tutorials for all the videos I do. In these tutorials, I include helpful links and also lots of helpful tips on how to complete these projects. I also try to post parts for all these projects, so if you ever need to find parts for a certain project, I'll most likely have some parts posted here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
We can also go play some, some of our favorite games like Minecraft. This computer, as you can tell, runs Minecraft really well. It doesn't even lie at all. I'm pretty sure my laptop at home even uh, lags when running Minecraft. So I was pretty pleased to see how well Minecraft plays on this computer. I'm a big fan of Fortnite, so I watched a bit of Fortnite on the computer and the video played flawlessly. I was also very pleased to hear that the sound comes through very nicely through the speakers we added to our computer. And most importantly, we can go to our very favorite YouTuber, Josh Build, and you can hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications when I post a new video. Thanks for watching.